are no shortages of negative catalysts for Tesla. I will be reviewing those negative catalysts towards the end of this video. But first, I'm going to introduce something to you that could actually be mind-blowing. And I'm not here to fluff or pump the pricing power, good old PP of a Tesla. I'm just here to provide you what could be a very realistic future for Tesla relative to the competition. Look, we've all heard about these rumors about production cuts in the automotive industry. And the fact is, it's true. The automotive industry is likely to reduce production in 2023 as we go into a recessionary environment. Now, this is actually very, very common. First of all, we've already seen Toyota reduce production in December. We also have Toyota suspending production at two very large plants in Japan for 16 days throughout January, citing shortages and COVID. But let's be real, it's probably because of a demand drop off. Even Bentley is reducing their production targets for 2023 as Chinese new orders slow and they shelve their IPO plans. The fact is that North American vehicle production for new vehicles is expected to be less than the 18 million vehicle production cycle peak that we ordinarily hit before the crazy times we've been going through of shortages. And that's because manufacturers are likely to try to survive rather than to increase their EV efforts. Now that, I really want you to think about what I just said. If manufacturers try to focus on surviving rather than focusing on EV, what does that potentially mean? Well, consider the following. Price and margin become very, very important during a recession. And what does a company like Ford not have with their Lightning 150 pickup truck or their Mach-E? price and margin. They don't have that. Why? Because their gross profit on these vehicles is negative. Now that's really scary, but it makes sense why right now Ford is only producing 60,000 Mach-E's and 30,000 F-150's, just one fifth, that's just 20% of their 2023 targets because they're money losing money pits money losing money pits. They lose a lot of money, okay? Now, a lot of folks say, but Kevin, isn't the EV credit likely to sway more automakers into the EV market? After all, it's 7,500 bucks to the consumer and it's rumored that maybe manufacturers who make EVs could take a lot of that benefit and the consumer just basically pays a higher price and the manufacturer takes a lot of that benefit. Potentially, but the EV credit is only likely to represent under 1% to at best 1.3% of vehicle sales between now and 2030. So you have to ask yourself, if you're a legacy auto manufacturer, if you're a GM, a Ford, or a Toyota, are you really trying to risk the profitability of your company chasing electric vehicles because of a tax credit that's going to cap at 1.3% of total vehicle sales? Of course not. In fact, you're much more likely to actually double down on your antiquated ways and try to suggest that you, as part of the ICE vehicle manufacturing industry, are part of none other than, folks, the silent majority. I kid you not. Let me introduce you to Exhibit A. Quick message before we hit exhibit A, the only sponsor of this channel is myself and the new holiday coupon code linked down below for the programs on building your wealth. There will be some phenomenal new lectures coming out and anybody who joins gets lifetime access to all of them for real estate investing, fundamental analysis, and perspectives on building your long-term wealth, as well as massive tax hacks that just don't perform well on YouTube when I share them on YouTube, so I don't. And I haven't found this information anywhere else. So if you wanna learn some really incredible strategies to maximizing your wealth and minimizing your taxes, check out programs like the Elite Hustlers course on building your income, top line, bottom line, employed, self-employed. Check out Stocks and Psychology of Money and really learn about money. Okay, we're talking money here, not, not short-term, get-rich-quick nonsense. Real estate, long-term, building wealth with real estate investing. How exactly is House Hack going to go buy real estate? And what can you learn to apply that yourself? Check out those programs with that holiday coupon code linked down below. And even though times are hard right now, do consider the holiday 
environment that we're in and take advantage of the holiday coupon code. In fact, if you want to gift one of the courses to anyone, you're welcome to email us at kevin at meetkevin.com and we can make sure it's delivered on Christmas or Christmas Eve, whatever you prefer for you. Let me introduce you to Exhibit A, a Wall Street Journal article that talks about the president of Toyota, whose last name is Toyoda. Yes, yes, I know. Uh, anyway, questioning whether electric vehicles should be pursued exclusively. Now, we know that EVs are difficult to manufacture relative to ICE in that you have to secure new supply chains, but they're actually substantially easier to put together once you figure your stuff out. But the president of Toyota says they would prefer to focus on hybrids and ICE vehicles and get this, hydrogen-powered vehicles rather than focus on EVs. Because you know what they say? They say the following. The silent majority is when wondering whether electric vehicles are really okay to have as a single option. The silent majority think that the trend is electric vehicles, so I guess we can't speak out loudly against electric vehicles. But let's be real. We're all in on ICE vehicles and hybrids and hydrogen-powered uh, vehicles and those good old gas engines because that's what people want. Because you know what? Charging infrastructure is still too challenging. So therefore, let's just double down on ICE vehicles. And after all, the gas engine businesses are driving a bulk of the profits that these companies are creating anyway. And so again, why potentially risk massive downside to your company's stock and profitability by doubling down on electric vehicles during a recession, why not instead just paint the picture that, hey, you know what? Electric vehicles are a niche segment of the business, just 6.5% of the total global new car market. And you know what? We could instead just focus on hybrids that can deliver a better shorter term impact for the climate. And you know what? Electric vehicles are just too complicated. In fact, look, even us over here at Toyota, you know, we've been a little slower than rivals to roll out electric vehicles. And maybe it's because the ones that we've created, like the BZ4X, got recalled because of safety problems. <sighs> well, folks, this is actually really interesting because what I want you to think about here for a moment is, wait a minute. If Kevin is suggesting that the EV tax credit is ironically not good enough to motivate manufacturers to get into EV manufacturing, other than those that already are, like Lucid, Rivian, Tesla, right? If that's not enough to motivate the Ford, the GMs, the Teslas, the Audis, the Mercedes to really double down on EV manufacturing, especially going into a recession where they might want to appear profitable so they double down on ICE vehicles rather than EV, then wait a minute. The competition is exiting in the recession. Think about that, folks. The recession is destroying Tesla's competition. Okay, sure. Look, Lucid is an EV, right? They'll benefit, uh, benefit pro pro potentially from this EV tax credit if they can source locally at over 75%, blah, 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 right? Maybe, but... If they produce 17,000 vehicles in 2023, knock on wood for their sake, they will still have half of their customers waiting until 2024 for a vehicle when you could press buy now on a Tesla right now, baby. And guess what? I don't know about you, but if I want something, I kind of rather have it now than wait another year. So there's a real big benefit to Tesla being able to say, hey, push the buy now button on a car and you'll have it tomorrow. People like that. People like instant gratification. And that's why Lucid is now scrambling to prevent cancellations. I did a video the other week when I was covering the Rivian and Lucid bankruptcy potential, where Lucid is potentially now scrambling to say if somebody wants to cancel, a local manager has to call the person three times, then a regional manager has, or a store manager has to call the person two times, then a regional manager has to call the person two times, and they all have to try to convince the person not to cancel the deal, something to that effect. Now, Lucid did just raise $1.5 billion at an at-the-money, uh, at-the-market, at-the-money 
offering, which is basically just a stock offering. Uh, they raised $1.5 billion. The stock actually went up briefly on this news because it decreases their bankruptcy risk slightly. It gives them another nine month runway of cash burn. $1.5 billion is roughly the cash burn they had in the last nine months. But another company expecting cancellations is Rivian, mostly due to the fact that their entry product is now more than $80,000. Why not buy a Tesla Model 3 potentially for closer to $40,000? Anyway, point here is that this recessionary environment, interestingly, from a fundamental point of view, could absolutely destroy Tesla's competition and pave the path to none other than reiterating, which already is dominant, Tesla's actual dominance as the other manufacturers crawl into a hole and go back to making the gas-guzzling vehicles they're good at producing. Wow. Now, how's that for a fundamental argument you haven't heard of before? But wait a minute, Kevin. The stock is going down and it's so painful. I look at my portfolio and it's red every day. Yes. I feel you. Okay? It makes me want to go back to the bottle. I'm talking, of course, about like the baby bottle, like drinking milk and crawling up into a hole and being covered in a little blankie and going to sleep until it's all over. It does hurt. It sucks. And if you define yourself by your portfolio every morning, you're going to get watery eyes and, and, and your stomach's going to feel bad and you're going to be, oh God, you're going to feel shortness of breath. Why? Because in the stock market, and this is something we teach in the Stocks and Psychology of Money group. And this is not a get rich quick kind of scheme. My courses are long-term programs on building your wealth, trying to teach you how to change the way you think in painful times. That is hard to do. And let me just give you one insight here. It is hard to see your portfolio go down. Why? Because my friends, because, 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 when we are in pain or in fear, we seek the natural reaction of either fight or flight. Well, guess what, folks? You can't fight stocks just like you can't fight the Fed. So what are you left with? Flight. That's it. It's either you eat the pain or you flee and you sell. And that sucks. And I'll tell you, there are no shortages of short-term garbage catalysts. Tax loss harvesting, please tax loss harvest some Tesla. Most retail sell in December to tax loss harvest and most retail rebuy in January, probably because of tax loss harvesting. Guess what else? You have an institutionally untouchable stock with every single credit or maybe not every single, but many different uh, price targeting firms uh, reducing their price targets for Tesla because guess what? That's what they do. When stock prices go up, they increase their price targets. When stocks go down, they decrease their price targets. You wanna fact check that? Go look up what the price targets were for Nikola. When the stock was going up, everybody on Wall Street's raising their price targets about how great Nikola is. It's all a farce. It's all a short-term farce. I kid you not, it's all a farce. Sure, Elon Musk is looking for a new CEO for Twitter. Yes, Elon Musk is robbing the piggy bank of Tesla, yes. Yes, Elizabeth Warren is correct when she says Elon Musk is using Tesla as his plaything. She is right. And I almost never agree with Elizabeth Warren, okay? But she is right. Elon Musk is using Tesla as his piggy bank to go dick around at Twitter. But you know what? That's his right, okay? It might be a slap in the face to every Tesla investor. It might be a slap in the face to every engineer and hardworking soul with stock options at Tesla, and they might see their net worth plummeting, and they might doubt the own company they work for. But the reality is, just because Elon absorbs six weeks of retail order book, uh, of, of HODL order book, with one fell swoop of selling, doesn't change the long-term fundamentals for Tesla. Now I know some people then go, oh my gosh, but Kevin, the volume is so much higher on Tesla stock. What do you mean six weeks of the order book? Listen, institutions trade stocks, retail individuals trade stocks. That's how you get volume. Volume is trading, but there are also hodlers of a stock like employees who believe in the company or long-term investors who believe in the company. And when those people have their shares 
eradicated by Elon selling, you actually notch the fundamental floor for Tesla stock down. And I, I should not use the word fundamental here because fundamentals should be long-term business fundamentals. But you have to think that hodlers, long-term believers in a stock, create a floor, a trading floor for a stock. And when those floors get broken and their purchasing, their fundamental based purchasing gets eaten away by insider selling because Elon's going to go play with, uh, you know, Twitter, it sucks. There's nothing you can do about it. But that's what happens. And you end up absorbing six weeks of retail buying pressure, huddle buying pressure on Tesla because of Elon's sales. And if he's selling again, uh, you, you know, today where the NASDAQ is flat and Tesla's down 2% again, Maybe, maybe, and it's painful, but let's also consider something else. Some folks are worried that Tesla might have to drop prices or, hey, what's going on with Tesla China demand? Okay, well, look, China, I believe, is in the biggest depression ever. Not only that, but they're lying to our faces about how many people are now dying to COVID as overnight they just lifted the blanket of COVID and are like, you know what? Everybody gets sick. If you die, oh well, okay? Who the hell is going to buy a car in China when everybody is stuck at home, either fearful of getting sick or they are sick? Okay, China is going to go through hell for the next two or three months and it's going to suck. But what should not make you fearful is the reiteration Tesla is giving you about Tesla Mexico. Tesla Mexico is expected to be at least an 800 to 800 million to $1 billion investment into the northeastern facility of Giga, Tex, uh, of Gigas, Giga Mexico, actually. And uh, this is initially expected to produce uh, components supplying uh, uh, Giga Austin, uh, Texas, but in the future could have as much as $10 billion of investment flow into Giga Mexico and potentially be the site of a new low cost production Tesla. This is a huge game changer for Tesla and a, an incredible opportunity to exercise optionality on the long-term value of, of Tesla. Uh, Giga Mexico is going to be huge, especially in my last video about Giga uh, Mexico, where we talked about Tesla is likely to explode soon because Giga Mexico is part of of the free trade agreements that we need for Tesla to maximize that $7,500 EV credit for all their customers over the incremental, incrementally harder targets that are set over the next years. And think about this. Put these pieces of the puzzle together here. Yes, in the short term, you have China FUD. It's real, okay? It's not, it's not fake news. It's real. China demand falling off a cliff because of what's happening in China. But in the long term, what do we have? Other manufacturers going away and moving away from EVs to protect their profit margins, where Tesla can now step in and just take more of the EV tax credit and is now likely, rather than doing stock buybacks to appease the whiny people on Twitter, reinvesting in itself because it believes so much in its own demand. Now, I know some people are concerned, but why when you go on Tesla, can you now hit buy now instead of custom order? This is a good thing. We talked about this in the course member live stream yesterday. This is a good thing. If I go into the Apple store and I'm like, and I did this, I bought this in Paris. This is, uh, you know, I don't know. This is like the star, star color or whatever of the iPad mini here. I walked into that store and I said, I want the mini iPad. If they told me, well, it'll be three weeks. I'm like, well, then I won't buy it. I mean, I'm on vacation now. I want a smaller iPad to have while I'm walking around Paris and traveling and stuff. But no, what do they say? Sure. Hey, you know what? We don't have all the colors available, but we got this one. Oh yeah, you know what? I'll take it because I want it now. That's America or first world country since that was in France. But anyway, that's what we want. We want things now. And if Tesla can provide now and they're still not yet reducing prices, that's a really good sign. Now, I do want you to prepare. Price cuts will come, but as long as price cuts occur slower, then costs decline, that could actually be okay. Because it means that Tesla can actually potentially either maintain or increase margin while reducing prices. And remember, even if Tesla doesn't necessarily reduce prices, even if prices stay stable, 
it's still a good thing for the Federal Reserve because we just don't want to see prices increasing. We want to see stability. That stability is 0% inflation. So long and short out of all of this, yes, other manufacturers are going to scale back their EV production in a recession. Yes, there are a hell of a lot of bad short-term catalysts for Tesla. It's painful. It sucks. I don't blame you for selling. But in the long term, I personally, and this is my personal opinion, not financial advice for you, I personally do not see a better opportunity in the market. I have not seen a better opportunity in the market for like the last $100 on Tesla share price, which just shows that that opportunity keeps getting better and better and better. And you know what? It might keep getting better and better and better. I'm not here to tell you that Tesla's gonna go green after you buy it. In fact, it's gonna feel like a money pit in a furnace. And guess what? That is what it means to be a, a recessionary based investor. When you're investing in a recession, it feels like hell. And I'm sorry, I wish I could make the pain stop, but boy, the more and more I look at the fundamentals, the more I'm like, man, I wish I had some more dough to throw in the Tesla stock, cause damn, it looks good. But unfortunately, I got a tax bill to pay, so I had to sell a little bit, and it pains me. But I still hold the vast majority of my Tesla shares. I'm very, very excited about the long-term future of Tesla, and you know what? Don't need the money. <laughs> so hey, buckle up, folks. We're on a ride.